All right, guys, somehow I magically did get it done. I mean, it worked really hard, but it's done. Let's take a look at it. I got it all installed. I bled it out. We'll still have to program this thing, but I should be able to manually do some stuff. So I'm gonna extend. Extend left. Extend right, rear, and extend the last one, rear left. All right. Well, I think I figured out that I'm gonna go with these mounts that also came with it. They came with like three sets of mounts. So these will work in the front. I think if I assemble the jack first, it'll be easier to keep in position and weld on. It told me to use these mounts in the back, but that's way too wide. It's gonna hit, it won't have any room for the tanks that are back there. So I'm gonna have to switch to what they were calling the front jack mounts. But I do have to cut the uh, old mounts off in order for these to even work. So I'm going to just try to get this done first. Alright. House battery's disconnected. <laughs> Chassis battery's disconnected. I got the front jack marked up. I already prepped the frame right there. So this is what I've come up with. So this jack is only about 12 inches or a foot long. And I want to be able to have it touch the ground, so the height where it is right there is just about even with the muffler there, so it's not sticking down any further than anything else, especially in relation to the other jack that was there to begin with. It would have been sticking down right about there. So I'm pretty pleased with how this looks. These should weld up pretty easily. The back's going to be more of a pain. Hey guys, you have to excuse it. I ran out of shielding glass and I didn't realize it. So I got the... Uh, the front jack's put on, so there's the front jack. Let's see if you can see it. Right there, driver's side, and this is the passenger side, and that's where I ran out of shielding, I guess. But there's more than enough weld there for everybody. It's really hard to get good angles with uh, these things, especially with compartments, generators, and uh, batteries, and fuel lines, and everything in the way. In the factory, they... Uh, they put on these mounts before they even put the floor on. So you have a lot more a lot more room. But one thing I did notice, it's a good thing I uh, I put these bolts on already. Or bolted everything together because uh, this mount is not deep enough to, to fish this bolt through again. So that those nuts or those bolts are captured now. <laughs> I mean, you can get a wrench behind it. That's not a problem. But trying to get that bolt out, you'll have to cut it and put a shorter bolt in in the future. All right, well, I got one of the uh, back brackets out of the way. Uh, it's going to be near impossible to get behind this compartment door wall to get all the welds that are right here past these gussets. So I just notched it out. Uh, this plate right in here. The other side is going to be a little bit harder because I got a... Uh, Wastewater tank right there. I think it's a sewer tank. Yeah, black tank. But that's all I'm going to do. Weld those up and then get this thing done. All right, so I've kind of decided where I'm going to put the uh, pump here. The pump just mounts up. Put this bracket here. This bracket actually goes over the top of the frame. And then it just through bolts to the back of the motor. There. So I've located it here. On top of the ledge right there. That's where I marked it. Grind that up. And now the uh, the whole thing should be carrying, the frame itself should be carrying the load. The welds on the back will just be uh, keeping it from uh, falling off. So I'll just weld it on this side of the frame, which is the outboard side on the driver's side. Because I have the most room here. And then the back of the manifold is towards the back, and so I wanted to make sure 
I have as much room for the hoses to uh, bend. I don't want to put them right against this cross member right there and not be able to get the hoses on there. Oh, look at that custom job. Well, I'm not proud of all of my welds, but they're more than more than enough for the, for the uh, for the jacks to work. It's just really hard angles on some of this because you got three sides and a floor. Even if you're on a lift, I don't think this would work very well. Uh, so I got everything welded up. Kind of see them welded up back there. There's just a small little window between that rear leaf spring perch and that floor, that wall support that actually uh, connects to the uh, the motorhome inside. So there's only one place I could have put this. There. Front ones, of course, I already have installed. Right there. And then the pump I have mounted. What do I got? So far away. Right there. So we should have good access. So this should be the easier part now. I just have to paint it, run the hoses, run the harnesses, and uh, do the electrical connections. And then I should be able to fill it up with the uh, fluid. I don't have any fluid. All right, guys. I got it all done. Well, everything's installed. Everything's wired. It's not finished. I still have to tie everything up, but I'm not going to uh, secure all the wires and make everything neat and then find out it doesn't work. Uh, I still have to fill the system up and I still have to test everything out. Um, there is no park brake wire on this setup. It's just ignition because it's disabled by ignition, if I remember correctly. Uh, the wiring schematic and the instructions really weren't fantastic. The uh, the harness wasn't laid out very well for the uh, pressure or the uh, jack down warning switches uh, at each jack. Doesn't look like either, uh, any of the switches or uh, harnesses go to a particular jack. It's just uh, if one's down, you, you don't have your system down. And that sounds right if I remember the Bigfoot. So let me uh, show you guys what's going on. I'm utilizing the same hole right there, obviously. Oh, I latched that back down. So I ran it to the house batteries. There's the breaker that goes to the pump. Right now, the ground is still off, so I shouldn't lock that up. Inside, underneath the dinette right here, that's where I've mounted the, uh, the brains, the level sensor. I'm having to have a lot of extra harness here. Outside right here, I'll be able to pull in a lot of the extra harness and tie, zip tie everything up right there. And I got you all wired up under here. The hoses, I, I set it up with the hoses. Green was extend, black was retract just because on these ports right here, you have uh, A, that's extend, and B is uh, retract, and B and black makes sense in my mind. Right in here, you got the battery cable. That's what's going inside. That's the uh, battery cable right there. Then you have the uh, this harness right here that goes to the, uh, the brain inside. So everything is a big mess under here. I have to uh, carefully take this plug off. Fill up the system and then uh, see if uh, this whole thing's going to work or not. And then I'll zip tie everything up and call it good. All right. I think that's pretty much it. Everything does work. And. Let's see how they look, huh? Well, they seem pretty straight. Okay. So the instructions say to, I guess, let it sit for 20 to 30 minutes to let all the air out. I'm not sure I've ever heard of such a thing on a hydraulic system, but okay. 
I got it set up. Jacks are down. Put a lot of pressure on them. So I'm testing my welds out too, right? <laughs> the jacks are fully uh, extended. And so uh, I'm taking a break. I have to get under there with a lot of zip ties and I need to make sure my welds aren't gonna kill me. Uh, so it's been holding pressure for at least an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Everything seems to be fine. Got everything zip tied up out of the way. So here's the pump. Got the cover on it, the two screws up there. Got all the hoses secured. And uh, I think we're ready to retract these jacks. So I have everything tied up in here. So we're doing pretty good. Not bad, great, but we're doing good. All right, well, we're all up, right? Yeah, we're all up. I just have to program this so it knows what level is. That's the last thing I got to do. All right, so I'm in zero mode right here. I did set the level, so I have the jacks back down, so I, I do know what level is. Got a carpenter's level inside, but it's really not big of a deal since I have a level floor. So now that I'm level, I should have to hit retract three times. All right. Uh, on some rigs, it has air dump, and so you would uh, have to tell it if it has a, a pilot dump that it has to initiate, but this doesn't have pilot dump, so I'm not going to worry about that. It should time out after that. All right, look at that. We're level. So now I should just be able to hit retract. And I'll retract all the jacks. All right, look at that. All up. And we're level. So I can turn it off. And turn it on. Turn it on. Wait for it to do its diagnostics check all right and then i just hit auto level and uh should start going on obviously with uh something this like this it's not a bad idea to get blocks to put under the jacks all right so leveled side to side just the rear light is on now, so it's bringing about the rear two jacks, hopefully. All right, it's just stabilizing now. Green light's on. So hopefully, hopefully it should be happy here shortly. Hey, look at that. Solid green light. We're level. We did it, guys. So happy, so very happy. <sighs> so we got it guys. Installing Bigfoot automatic leveling system, hydraulic, single pump from Quadra Manufacturing on a 2019 Leprechaun. And uh, I'm tired, we got it done. I'm in the dark now. I worked too long. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions? Oh, I forgot. On Bigfoot, they're a little bit different from the rest of everybody else. They won't work if the ignition is on. So I have the engine running right now. So if I were to try to turn this on, it won't work. That's what that ignition wire was for. That was it. We did it. Oh, I guess I didn't. Bye.